Hello and welcome to the battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.09. Today we are going to cast a 1v1 replay on the most recent map, The Last Bridge. At the bottom side of the map, we have the yellow Man of the West player, Ark. And at the top right side, we have the blue Goblin player, Ixilion. Good versus Evil El Clasico matchup. I like that. And that's a very well-designed map. Look at this tunnel around this side. And also around this side. However, that's only for visual things. By the way, of course, you are not allowed to use those tunnels. They will be kind of busted. Imagine that for a single second. We have also Vortlia on each side of the map. And also Troll layers protecting those ends at the right side, but also at the left side. I like this matchup a lot. I like the clash of good versus evil. I think that's the most interesting matchup you can actually get in all Battle for Middle Earth games. We have two, three tunnels coming up for the Goblin player. We have two farms, three farms, and farm number four coming up for the Man of the West player, Archangel. Economical opening. And by the way, uh, you are also allowed or able to play these games in 2021 for free. You can download that in the description down below. We have a stable coming up now for the Gondor Knights. On the other side, we see a Goblin Cave coming up for the Goblin player, Ectelion. And Goblins are just like in BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King, the spammy faction. Ideally, you want to build multiple Goblin Caves and spam lots of Goblins on the field all the time. Spider Pit is coming up at the same time for the Spider Links early on, but Spider Riders later on, which are the cavalry units from the Goblin faction. And I like BFME 2 quite a lot because the animations in BFME 2 are next level. They are looking amazing. Powerpoint wise, Goblin player didn't pick anything just yet, and Man of the West player didn't pick anything just yet either. Remember in BFME 2, when you pick random, the random is not uh, the random is not revealed in the loading screen. That means in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, you will see the players picking up something like cave beds or tainted land just to be able to see the enemy faction. But that was not the case for now. The builder is moving to the top side. He might be actually building an offensive barracks around this area. And look at this beautiful design, dude. That looks nice. A lot of time has to be invested in a map like this. And great job by the mappers of BFME 2. The archery range coming up, coming up next. I'm assuming he's going to use the Gondor Knights for the, for the attack. And archers for the defense. But of course, goblins, they don't stand a chance against the mighty Knights of Gondor. And even with tall crowns, and you will still get one shot if I'm not mistaken. We will see about that. Let's see. Yeah, you will you will be one shotted. There is no way of or no reason of actually using the old crown stands if you get one shotted anyway. And again, in BFME 2, there is a hard counter system. That means uh, there is no swordman that can actually one v one a Gondor Knight, for example. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which you can fight with the half throw swordman against Gondor Knights quite easily. Spider Links. They are quite... Uh, look at that. They are very slippery, you know. They are quite fast. And also very hard to target. Cave pads will be used. Cave pads is a massively active power point from the goblins in BFME 2. Because it nullifies enemy buffs and leadership and debuffs them on top of that. So three effects, which is pretty amazing. Beautiful trampoline coming from the Man of the West player with the Gundam Knights. Two battalions, but they are surrounded. And remember, they are losing now a quarter of the damage and a quarter of their tankiness. Which makes those spiderlings deal a bit more damage. And look at this. I didn't even know that you can use the bridge actually. I take it back. I thought it's not possible, but it definitely is possible. We have archers now being surrounded by the goblins, but trample is gonna save them. Nice micro here from the Man of the West play Archangel. Thief bats are still flying around, but I'm assuming the Man of the West play will be easily able to win this fight. In the meantime, there is no damage dealt to the economy of either player so far. Spider Pit is still level 1, level 2 is required to be able to recruit the Goblin Spider Riders later on. And no heroes on the field just yet. We might see Eomer, we might see Theodin from the Man of the West player, and we might see of course Shilob. Remember Azog doesn't exist in Battle for Middle Earth 2. That means you can go for the Goblin King Gorkil instead, who is way way cheaper in BFME 2 in compared to the Rise of the Witch King. Alright, the tunnel is going to be found and eventually taken down. The tunnels are quite squishy buildings in BFME 2. You can take them down in no time. Farms on the other side are definitely a bit tankier. They have double the HP of a level 1 tunnel. The well is coming up for the sustain. And uh, remember what I was always saying that the good factions have some advantages over the evil factions in BFME 1 and in Rise of the Witch King because they lack of sustain. This is definitely different in BFME 2. In BFME 2, also evil factions have lots of sustain. 
They can even pick up the heal from the spellbook, for example. Shilop is going to be the first hero. That's pretty nice. Shilop is going to be a great counter hero against the Gunner Knights. But also against the archers. She's level 3 in no time. Basically, in Battle for Middle Earth 2, the heroes are able to level up from level 1 to level 4 quite easily. Every level after that is going to be a bit more challenging. Shilop is also able to ignore everything, by the way. She can walk over the sea, over the mountains, no problemo. Look at that. She's walking over this. And that means in some situations you can actually get away from, you know, with her, especially when you have the level unlocked for the tunnel, which is level 7, you can teleport from one location to the other location in literally one second. This is going to be taken down. We have now Rohirrim, the Rider of the Mark, which are going to be, of course, more effective than the Gunner Knights. They are the elite cavalry units from the Man of the West faction, but also they have no chance against the mighty Spider Queen Shilob. She has also the uh, Vapor of Angoliant with level 10, which is going to cripple enemy units in spider webs for 4.5 seconds and drains their life for the duration. Shilop will be healed based on the damage she will be able to deal to the heroes. And look at that, the spiderlings are faster than the Rohirrim, and the Rohirrim battalion, unfortunately for the Man of the West play Archangel, is going to be taken down. In the meantime, some counter pressure, nice one, he was able to destroy one of the Tanners. Fissure is coming up now for the half troll pikeman units. It's a counter pikeman to the Rohirrim spam from the Man of the West player so far. As we see more and more Rohirrim, but we also now see some tower guards from the barracks of the Man of the West player. Stable level 2, archer range level 1, and barracks is level 1 as well. Human Wood was used. Human Wood will grant you the armor buff, which is a buff boost of 35% increased armor for the nearby allied units on top of the Human Wood. 7 power points, the builder has been taken down, that hurts, always, at every stage of the game when you lose a builder, it's gonna eh, be, a, be a big punishment for the, for, for the player, you know, because the builders, they are actually quite expensive, they cost 400 each, but also you lose a lot of potential and growth. Alright, the tunnel is gonna be safe, level 2 tunnels, giving you also, by the way, more of course, more command points, you get plus 50 command points, that means from a level 2 tunnel, you get instead of 50, 100 increased command points. So losing it is going to be quite painful. And he's gonna lose that. He's gonna drop down to 400 command points only. Tainted Land will be used, which is pretty much the same ability like the Human Wood from the Man of the West player. Will grant the Goblins and half throw Pikemen and everything from the Goblin player on top of that. 35% increased armor. But Goblins are dropping down to 450 command points. Shilop is coming from behind. She's almost level 4. Level 6 is needed for the Poison Stinger, which will paralyze the enemy hero for 6 seconds and, you know... Poison him for 30 seconds, causing him to take damage over time. And Paralyze is a bit different than Crippling. When you are Paralyzed, you can't shoot, you can't move, you can't attack, you can't use any ability. When you are crippled from Lourdes, for example, you can still attack him with Bow or Sword. You can still use your abilities like Bleed Master with Aragorn and so on. But Paralyzing is a bit different. Hobbit Summon has been used. And they are committing on the Spider Pit level 1. They will be able to take it down. You know, the Gang, Samwise Gang, G4, the Baggins, Peregrine, Took. And of course, Maria Rock Brandybuck. But unlike in the film, Samwise EMG has been taken down by the Spider Queen Shilov, as well as all the other hobbits, and now she's level 4. But, you know, regardless, the Man of the West play is in a very good spot. 900 command points collected in total against 500 command points only from the Goblin player. But he has no heroes on the field just yet. I would love to see a hero like Tyrion or Eomer. 6 power points collected after the Tainted Land and Goblin, uh, or Keefbats rather, sorry. Shilop is getting more and more powerful. She's also quite beefy. She's extremely tanky against anything but against Pikemen. She has almost 4000 health already with level 4. And more levels mean more DPS and more tankiness for every hero in Battle for Middle-earth games. 7 power points collected. The Vorkling has been secured by the Man of the West play Archangel. He will also get the money of course, which is pretty nice. But the counter-attack might be quite successful. The farm is going to be definitely taken down. They were just using the poison arrows, by the way, which again will poison the enemy units and cause them to take damage over time. Every unit is dying in no time, and Wildman of Thailand Summon will be unlocked now from the Spellbook of Goblins. Level 3 Gondonite will be getting in safety just in time. Wildman of Thailand will be now special summoned. The terror is available, which causes the enemy units to fear and flee. 700 command points collected now for the 
Man of the West player, he was dropping uh, for the Goblin player. He was just around at 500 command points. He's actually recovering quite nicely, building more and more Thanos. But Man of the West player is almost for command points. We have two heroes though. Gore killed the Goblin King is on his Scorpion. Has now leadership unlocked, which is, by the way, um, a very interesting leadership because it's also affecting the trolls, making them faster and also healing them up over time. It's an armor inspiring thing, which is different than the armor buff. And every unique leadership in BFMA2 is able to stack with each other. That means you cannot have two times armor inspiring, but you can have armor inspiring, armor buff, damage inspiring, and damage leadership. So basically, what you could potentially do if you wanted to, you can use the Warchant from the Spellbook, and the Warchant would be able to stack with the leadership from Gorkil the Goblin King, who has also double buff, by the way, because he has also Skull Totem, which will give you the armor buff just like the Tainted Land. 12 power points collected by the Man of the West player, but he is having some trouble dealing with the Goblin heroes. Garkill and Shilob are actually both mounted, dealing incredible amount of damage, also sharing experience in a situation like that, that causes them to level up much, much faster. Level 6 for Poison Stinger now unlocked for both the heroes. Tunnel is unlocked now for Shilob. She will be using it to get in safety. And boom, she's on the other side of the map, just in time to defend this tunnel against the Rohirrim. The mobility advantage you get with Shilob is kind of actually crazy. She was also able to save the tunnel level 2, which is pretty awesome. And now is the time for the, for the Man of the West player to be a bit more careful. Because once those Goblin heroes are hitting level 10, they will have a massive power spike. Gorkil will be able to summon not one, not two, but three fire drakes. And of course, Shilob is going to be a massively impactful hero as well she will deal crazy amount of damage she will have a lot of sustain with the level 10 ability as well so in, in on the other side we have the man of the west play with no heroes on the field just yet no aragon no gandalf no Tyrion, no eomir no eovin no faramir no boromir nothing like that and even if he gets now some heroes on the field the heroes will of course be under leveled you know they will have no chance to compete with the goblin heroes so far and he's even feeding them more and more and more he needs now some tower guards definitely to counter the mounted heroes from the goblin player skull totem has been used shilob is you know squishy but there is nothing that can kill her in a situation like that she's almost level 9 already gorkil is almost level 7 but again level 10 is needed and you will now see yourself that getting those le missing level you know missing three levels is going to be way way harder than getting the initial five levels at the beginning of the game cave troll now spamming or you know smashing i will smash him ranger summon but again they will just get trampled down from chill the second and look at the oh my goodness man look at the splash damage he's able to deal almost level 10 already are you kidding me and the troll is smashing at the same time tower guards at this point the man of the west player is just feeding a lot the ranger summon which is a 15 power point summon from the man of the west player spell book was absolutely useless the troll has been taken down but taken down but that's fine level 7 gore kill the goblin king with double poison stinger that means an enemy hero regardless how strong he will become will get poison stinger twice and he will be paralyzed for 12 seconds in total will be poisoned for 60 seconds in total which will cause him to take so much damage over time the watcher has been summoned by the way in the meantime watcher in the water and you can see yourself the animations of pfme 2 are just next level even though it's an older game than battle for middle of 2 the rise of the witch king it looks and feels much more newer seven power points collected after the ranger summon the builder has been found and will be eventually taken down once again 1000 command points for the man of the west play which is great because he keeps losing units all the time and with the insane amount of command points he got he will be also able to replace them all the time the builder has been or will be taken down actually and you can see that builders are a bit tankier in bfme today in rise of the witch king but on the other side you are not able to build wall hubs and if you are, they are going to be, of course, way more expensive. 8 power points collected after the Ranger Summon. We will, hopefully, and eventually be able to see the 25 power points in this game. Definitely in late game. As players are getting closer and closer to the power spike. Hobbit Summon will be used defensively to, leave, to save this level 1 farm. But Goblins can just disengage. Warchen has been used. They are committing now on the Galadrim Warriors coming from the inn for the Man of the West player. Trolls are getting into, into the range and smashing them down on the ground. Hobbits in the meantime trying to make something happen, but they are not able to catch the fast units of goblins and trolls. 
Now trolls are turning for the Baggins. The ring bearer is trying his best with his best friend Samwise Gamgee, who is again ready to carry his but <laughs> turn trolls look these trolls they are they are they don't want to attack the hobbits turn and kill them never mind they are like hobbits you are too small for us i don't want to deal with you you know what i'm saying look at them hobbits from the shire in the meantime uh, we have a massive attack incoming with lots of cavalry units rohirrim and gondonites and also being spotted with tower guards and archers when you want to deal with the monsters like trolls, I believe you need to make the transition very, very soon into the rangers and don't waste your command points into the Gonda archers instead. 12 power points collected. Marketplace is coming up now to boost the money. Marketplace is such a such a important structure for the Man of the West player, especially if you have like at least 600 command points collected. It will boost your money income so much. But again, I'm very surprised that the Man of the West player is not going for any heroes so far. I have not seen any hero from the Man of the West player just yet. On the other side, we have Shilop, level 10. Oh, I missed the web of Ungoliant. My bad, guys. Sorry for that. I'm really sorry for that. And also, Gorkil is only three levels and a bit less away from getting his own level 10 unlocked, which is going to be quite devastating. Fourteen power points collected. Eleven power points away from the twenty-five which can be the Balrog Summon or the Summon Dragon for the Goblins. On the other side, we have 10 power points needed for the Man of the West player to unlock his 25, which can be Earthquake or the Army of the Dead. Oh my goodness, Shelob. I've never seen Shelob getting level 10 in a multiplayer game, actually, so far. In a, in a serious game, at least. And that's a challenge between the best players of PFME 2. Archangel and Ectelion, they are... You know, both PFME 2 expert players, they have been playing this game now for many, many, many years. And they're also being involved in the patch making project of the patch 1.09, version 3, by the way, which is going to be released very, very soon. Power Guard. They are not fast enough to catch those. Oh, Tom Bombadillo. That's a thing, you know. Tom Bombadillo is a great power point, of course, very effective, also good against heroes and stuff like that, but. He will be delaying his 25 big time. Beautiful Sonic Song is incoming from the Young Tom Bomber deal. Look at him, boys. He looks like a Christmas dude, you know. Ho, ho, ho. You know, Santa Claus. And he's so extremely tanky, by the way. He has 6,000 health, which is quite insane. It's very, you know, very hard. You can see he's surrounded, but it, it's so hard to take him down. Shilop is trying to hit him. Gorkil is trying to hit him. He will be able to get killed, but he was so extremely tanky, which is kind of insane. 1,000 command points still for the Man of the West player, which is pretty amazing. Now with Marketplace, of course, you can see the glowing animation on the farms. It will cause them to get more money from the Grand Harvest. On the other side, we have 22 power points collected for the Goblin player, Ectilion. Three power points away. Now we have finally a hero. That is Eomir, but he's paralyzed. You can see he can't move. Uh, yeah, he's doomed. Did he not just use the spear throw? He, he can move. He has been used, but he can get paralyzed once again from... No, never mind. Level 10 is almost unlocked for... Or ability once again available. Boromir is going to be the next hero on the list. For Gondor! I mean, can he make something happen? Because he's only level 1, while the goblin heroes are in insanely high leveled. Yeah, Boromir is effective, but I'm assuming he's not going to be a match against the mighty creatures. The... Marketplace is going to be taken down and the Balrog summon is going to be available now. The demon of the ancient world will be summoned. Boom, son. On your face. The ignite will be used to boost his damage. Double the damage and 50% increase armor. And that's going to make him hit like an absolute track. And of course, the animation, you know, when you summon Balrog underneath of the enemy units, it will one-shot most of them. And the fire whip, unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1, is also effective against structures. Boom. There we go, Barax has been taken down. He can still use Breathfire to kill all these three buildings behind. He's going to use Fly first. And look at that, Shilop in the meantime taking care of Elmer. The Horse Lord of Rohan is no more. Boromir is getting bullied. Hardcore. Look at Shilop's damage. Boom, San. But Boromir is actually also able to deal great amount of damage, even though he was only level 4, but it's not enough. Shilop also has been taken... Or Shilop also was able to take him down. Stable Devil 3. Heal has been used. And that's what I was trying to say at the beginning of the game. Go, you know, the evil factions. Look at this mother with the child. The evil factions in BFME 2 have also now sustained, unlike in all the other Battle for Middle Earth games. And I believe that's also pretty nice for the balance of the game. Because how you want to balance a game, 
when one factions have a clear advantage of the other factions. You know what I'm saying? Now with the heal, oh, Gorkil was running it down into the Galadrim warriors. He has actually a lot of them. They're also very expensive. They cost 400 each. But Man of the West player is dropping down to 950. He has a lot of money, though. Uh oh remember man of the west player or man of the west faction rather has no rebuild available in battle in battle for middle earth 2 that's a big commitment on the fortress it's taking actually so much damage rohirrim are coming but what can rohirrim do against such a reckless seat more reinforcement from the goblin player ranger summon is still on cooldown hobbit summon is still on cooldown tom bomber deal summon is still on cooldown but arrow volley is gonna be unlocked arrow volley has to be used now which will deal some damage of course but the half throw pikemen are so extremely tanky with whole crown stands, they can actually tank this damage for a long time. Can he save the fortress? It's a big commitment. It's almost at 50% health. Rohirrim can't match this. He needs some rangers. He needs some archers. He needs some shenanigans. Boromir is back on the me. Oh, but Boromir can stun them, am I right? Yeah, Boromir is going to use Horn of Gondor to stun them. Boom. That's nice. And what a back and forth game. Man of the West player has still 1,000 command points available, by the way, which is kind of insane. But he has only one production building. He lost the stable level 3, he lost the archery range, he lost the barracks before. And killing production buildings in late game is so effective. However, he has so much money now. He should be definitely trying to get some stronger heroes on the field like Aragorn or Gandalf. Even them, even those heroes couldn't match the shield of level 10, am I right? I want to see that. Use the web of Ungoliant. Don't die, Shilob. The, the Revenge of the Hobbits. The Poison Stinger will be used on Frodo Baggins. Frodo Baggins has been taken down. Now he's, she's turning on, on the Sam or, you know, Marietta Brandybuck. Peregrine Took is going to be the next target. And Shilob has been slain. Which is very ironic, just like in the films from the Hobbits. <laughs> I mean, in the films, she didn't really die. Actually, guys, what happened to Shilob, right? Because Gollum, I mean, not Gollum. Samwise was not able to kill her. So she was able to get away, right? I'm actually wondering what happened to her after that. After Mount Doom got destroyed. Because she was in the Mount Doom, right? She, the Shilob Slayer was in the Mount Doom, in the Mortar. And Mortar kind of got destroyed. So I'm assuming she also died. Am I right? And we have 15 power points collected for the Man of the West player. The thing is that he was forced to go for the Arrow Volley. That he was forced to go for the Tom Bomber deal. And this all is delaying his 25 big time. 1,000 still. Man of the West player has still a lot of money. And has the potential to get back into the game. Boromir, level 5, has the damage leadership unlocked now. Which means more damage for the nearby allied units by 50% uh, increased damage. Which is pretty amazing. Watcher is going to be available very, very soon. But the Goblin player has lost a lot. Like, he needs to revive the Shilob. He needs to revive Gorkil the Goblin King ASAP. And in the meantime, Boromir is getting more and more levels. However, Boromir is not meant to be a very strong 1v1 hero. You know what I'm saying? Boromir is like more like a sportive hero designed like that in Battle for Middle-earth games. With the stun of Horn of Gondor, with the leadership he's able to offer, and with the Captain of Gondor for leveling up the allied units. He has nothing like Blademaster, nothing like Poison Stinger, no debuff. Nothing that can make him stand out in a 1v1 fight. The Watcher will be summoned and Elmer is flying. Beautiful watches summon once again from the Goblin player for a defense. He has also scavenger now from the spellbook, which means money, money, money every time he is able to kill enemy units. I am personally in love with the scavenger because I believe it gives you so much value, you know, throughout the entire game. The longer the game goes on, the more beneficial this ability is going to become in the, in the game. And as this game is far from being over, I'm assuming at the end of the game he will be able to collect over... Potentially 5,000 resources with the one power point from the spellbook only, and that is Scavenger, ladies and gentlemen. 10 power points collected. But he's down to 250 command points only, my dude. He has only one single tunnel, boys. He lost everything on the map. Everything. Archangel is up still to 925 command points. He has such a massive fleet, and now he has 24 power points collected as well. Aerovoli is coming in clutch. Boom, son, boom, son, boom, son. Boromir, and Boromir can have such a great synergy, you know, with the arrow volley, because you can stun them, and then you can just land arrow volley for free, or long shot from rangers, and so on. Level 6 is unlocked. Look at the minimap. The map is looking yellow to me. And Man of the West play is only a quarter and a bit more than that away from his 25, which is going to be the game-winning ability, if I'm not mistaken. Earthquake in a situation like that, holy quackamole. <laughs> Trust me on that one, it's gonna be just, like, juicy. 
975, the money is rising. He needs to replace the marketplace, though, I'm assuming, right? Looks like he was not able to rebuild the marketplace yet. I'm also very surprised that the Walkley is still around. Ranger summon, there is Gold Kill the Goblin King trying to poison uh, Boromir. If he takes down Boromir, he might get level 9, by the way, but Boromir is a beefy hero, too. So he's taking damage over time for 30 seconds. And it looks like Gorkil is not going to risk the biscuit. He's going to get inside the tunnel and get out. 13 power points collected. Rohirrim summon. What is he doing? Why would you not go for the 25, my dude? Like, he's actually delaying his 25 so much. But Gondor calls for 8 and Rohan will answer. Rohan might answer. With the Rohirrim summon, he will be trying his best to deal as much damage to the structures from the Goblin Play Ectherion as possible. But I'm assuming 25, or that's my guess, 25 would be a bit more impactful in a situation like that. But he has such a massive lead, he can you know, afford making mistakes like that. Shilok is on the field, she's level 10, of course, for a long time. Scavenger is paying off, and goblins are getting more and more value, more and more money. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the weapon on Galeon, you see, pew, 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 like a spider woman, you know, pew, 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 pew. And, uh, yeah, she was able to get a bit more money. By the way, this is not existing in BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. 18 power points collected. And Goblin Player will be once again able to defend himself. Human Wood will be used for the vision he will need for the Rohirrim summon. Yes. Gondor calls for it and Rohan will answer. Do -do 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 -do. Master the Rohirrim. And the commitment is real. The Fissure Level 2 is getting blown up. Like, I mean, literally blown up. It would be one-shotted. The Rohirrim are dealing crazy amount of damage, but also Fissure is extremely squishy building. Has 3,000 HP only with level 2. Has no chance against this many Rohirrim at the same time. The only good thing about this situation for the Goblin player is that he's gonna get so much money from, from the scavenger. You see, plus, nine, plus 19 you will get for killing each of these Rohirrim. Elmer has been crippled or poisoned. And heal is gonna be used. I don't think he will be able to get away. Yeah, he gets away actually, never mind. He's tanking all these towers. He might still be taken down. The Goblin Caves level 3 are acting like a tower. And 562 for killing the Horse Lord of Rohan. The current king. Because remember, Elmer was the one who got, who, who used, you know, who was getting the king after Theoden got killed by the Witch King. Because Theoden's son, Theodred, spoiler alert by the way, got killed in the beginning of the films, the Lord of the Rings in the two towers. And then... Eomir was the only person related with Eowyn together. And then, of course, Eomir was able to get throned as the king of Rohan. Army of the Dead has been unlocked. 1,000 command points. Goblins have lost everything. Like, he has almost nothing on the field beside the heroes. Gorkil, the Goblin King, and Shilob. And they are also very, very squishy. However, if Gorkil gets level 10... He might be able to buy some time. But I'm assuming he needs more than time. He needs to get some map control back. To be able to get the money income uh, high enough to replace the units he's losing all the time. And uh, the good thing is that he has scavenger. That means he's getting some value from it in long terms. Look at that. How much money he's getting for killing those Caladrim warriors. But again, this is not going to be enough to get you back into the game. However, Balrog summon might be used very, very soon again. In about like 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. 23 power points collected. Like 2 power points away from getting the summon dragon unlocked. And Gorkil is gonna try to get the experience he's missing. But again, every level 3 structure in BFME 2 and the Rise of the Witch King is gonna act like a tower while being extremely tanky at the same time. The farm here is gonna be protected for now. The power points are rising. The thing is, if the Goblin player Ectelion can time the Balrog Summon with the Summon Dragon at the same time, he can make something happen. Trust me on that one. Like, imagine you, imagine a situation in which you see the Balrog summon, the Dragon summon, and this guy's level 10 with the Fire Drakes. I believe this trio can take down even the Fortress in no time. However, this guy still needs a little bit more experience to get level 10, like a tiny bit. I want to actually keep an eye on Garkill the Goblin King because I don't want to miss the animation. I've never seen that in a multiplayer game just yet. And look at that, you dude. Like, he needs to kill, like, one plap laborer or something like that. 25 power points collected now. In the meantime, we have some counter-attack action going on. What is this game, man? <laughs> Come on now. It's excited. Now, here's the worm. Okay, the worm summon is also pretty effective against structures, by the way. 
And again, you cannot underestimate them, this level 10 heroes, you know? And he will get level 10 now after ki killing this warg, right? Watch this. What? Hey, Gorkil, what are you doing? The Scorpion King. Come on, Gorkil. No, kill him, dude. White Man of Thunder will be summoned. The marketplace is going to be found. War chant into the market. And remember, they have also leadership now from the Gorkil, the Goblin King. The Blacksmith is going to be taken down before or after it's re uh, reaching level 2. Arrow Wally. You will be able to dodge the incoming damage. It's not effective against you, against heroes, by the way. Hobbit Summon will be used defensively. Look at this money he's able to steal with the White Man of Thunder and with the Pillage, you know? Fire level 10. Cool, the fire drakes. Level 10, boys. They have also the Inferno. Three of them. You see this animation, this magma on the ground? I want to see that. The Balrog summon. Fire drakes. The worm. What is going on now? Um, what is this fiesta, my dude? What is this? The Balrog, the fire drakes, the worm at the same time. But army of the dead. Holy guacamole! Army of the Dead will be used summon, uh, will be summoned defensively, of course. The breath fire from Balrog against the Army of the Dead. I don't know what's going on. The Army of the Dead has been disappeared, right? Or Gorkil has been uh, slain. The fire drakes just use Inferno, maybe. I don't know why not. We have three of them. The farm has been taken down. Can he actually commit and take down the fortress? That's the big question. The thing is that Goblin Play is only two and a half power points away from getting his 25 again. The summon dragon unlocked. But in the meantime, he has almost no units on the field. 60 from 500 available command points. But in the meantime, also take a look into his money. Like, he has almost 4,000 resources collected. He has actually money enough to replace all the stuff he's losing. Look, Balrog is even able to get you more command points. And more power points, I mean, sorry. The Builder. Whip him. <laughs> Alright. Pew! 24, one power point away. Did he actually also lose the Shilop? No, Shilop is still on the field. Was using Tunnel to get in safety. In one power point away from the 25. The thing is that the power points, the summons, from any faction are not very effective against fortresses. You know, even Earthquake, for example, will deal great amount of damage to the structures around the fortress. However, the fortress is a bit more resistant against this kind of stuff. But he has now the summon dragon, ladies and gentlemen. And will he use that immediately, right off the bat? I don't think so. And also, I'm kind of a bit disappointed from the usage of the fire drakes, you know? I think they could have done a bit more. But it's fine, because if he gets to revive the Gorkil, he will be able to use it again. And again, and again, and again. And you can see in this kind of situations how valuable those heroes are when you invest the money into them early on. To get them some levels later on. Now, both of them are level 10. And of course, we could also potentially see Gorkil, not Gorkil, the Dragon Lord Drogov later on. Tom Bombadilo will be summoned. Fire Whip or the Web of Ungaliant or <laughs> Ungaliant or Angaliant is on cooldown. Tom Bombadil is able to knock her down. Elma is back on the, on the field with level 6. He will unlock the Outlaw leadership, which means even more money for the Man of the West play. He's now replacing his Marketplace and Blacksmith. But again, Summon Dragon is going to be able to take them down anyway. So no problem around this side. Shilop is getting in safety barely. She might turn and use the web of Ungaliant. I think that's going to be the plan. The Watcher! Boom, son! What a beautiful Watcher summon from the young goblin player, Ictilion, in the building. And actually, I'm surprised that he's able to hold himself in the game for such a long time. Even though he's down almost uh, to, you know, like less than half a power point of the Man of the West player, Archangel. The web of Ungaliant has been used. To cripple them for a couple of seconds. The Watcher has been doing a phenomenal job, by the way, defending. And uh, Shilop needs to get in safety. However, even though he's down a lot of command points, but there comes the Dragon Lord Rogov, ladies and gentlemen. And what can Elmer do against such a reckless hit? The answer is absolutely nothing. And now two dragons. Boom, son. Oh, Spear Throw doesn't even hurt him, my man. The, the Black Dragon, you know. Look at this. Oh my goodness, man. The animations are next level. He's now using the reposition to get in to get in this position. And again, every attack from the Summon Dragon is going to act like the Breath Fire from Balrog. It's able to hit, hit multiple units at the same time. And the Scavenger is paying off, guys. Trust me on that one. It's making the Goblin player stand in the game. And the heroes, you can see and tell, 
They are doing a phenomenal and incredible job for the Goblin player in this beautiful match on the beautiful map, The Last Bridge. And again, a brand new map in BFME 2, guys. They are actually doing a lot of mapping. And I'm hoping to use a couple of these maps also in our patch, the patch 2.22 for Battle for Middle Earth 1. The problem is that uh, BFME 2 has many, many textures which BFME 1 doesn't have. So we are not allowed or able to use those maps for our game without editing them. And I have no knowledge about that. So I need to find people who are able to do that. <laughs> the summon dragon in the building. The archer range has been taken down and goblin player is still in the game. And level three unlocked now. The wing blast is available. I would like to see that wing blast around this side, but it looks like he doesn't want to risk it. He's getting in safety with the dragon lord, who is also able to deal a great amount of damage to the farms, by the way. The farm here is going to be taken down next. On the other side, Earthquake is available now. And Earthquake, you will see. Like, that's a perfect situation for the Man of the West player Archangel to use the Earthquake on. Because it will be able to hit most of these structures around the fortress at the very same time. But I cannot believe that. How the Goblin player is still in the game. I don't get it. He was down to 250 command points while the Man of the West player had 1000 command points. And... I mean, I'm asking, but I know the answer. Because he had those amazing two heroes, Shilob and Gorkil the Goblin King, saving him for a, for many, many times from getting defeated. That's awesome, dude. Awesome. Shilob is getting in safety. Never mind, she's safe. She's level 10 and has the web of Ungoliant once again. And again, such a crazy amount of impact. Insult Terror will be used to, you know, force them to retreat. Boromir is here... Uh, level 7, but again, Boromir is, you see how much he's, she's able to heal from using the Evapo Fungoliant based on the damage she's able to deal to heroes. That means if there are more heroes than one, you will be even able to heal more. Against Men of the West faction with plenty of heroes available from the fortress, you can actually heal from 0 to full HP in a second. 6 power points collected, I don't want to miss the Earthquake. He should be using it now. because The thing is, he can combine the Earthquake with the Rohirrim summon, right? Rohirrim are dealing great amount of damage to the fortress as well. So basically, you want to use Earthquake to kill all these expansions around the fortress. And then you want to come in with your Rohirrim and surround the fortress and hope that it will be it will be enough to take it down. 1,000 command points still for a really long time for a Man of the West player. Maybe if you would have gone for the heroes like Aragorn or Gandalf, those expensive but also more valuable heroes, he would be able to match the Goblin heroes right now. But you can see it's like very, very hard for Elmer and also Boromir to fight against the mighty creatures of the Goblin faction player, Ectilion. Level 10, Phydrex has been used. They are not dealing crazy amount of damage to the structures. Still a decent amount of damage though. Remember, that's a level 3 farm. Not even this is able to lower him down from 1000 command points, you know? He has so many farms outside level 3. Use Inferno, please. Use Inferno, I want to see that. They don't need to use Inferno. Oh, that's the Inferno, my, mo my man. They have even heavy armor. They still get one-shotted, by the way. They have heavy armor. Let me check. Yes, heavy armor purchase on this Rohirrim, but it's not enough to withstand the fire of the creature's fire drakes. 12 power points collected. Earthquake has been used, but the fortress has the armor on it. Do you see that? This webs around the fortress that represents the armor of the fortress, the dragon nest. I believe that also grants... I mean, that is needed, by the way, to get the Fire Drake from the Fortress here. If you want to get him. So you need to, first of all... That there's a minimum requirement. You need to purchase, first of all, the Dragon Nest before you can, you know, recruit the Fire Drake. But also, I believe this is, you know, granting you extra armor on your Fortress. Making it more resistant. In level 4. Imagine if you also get level 10 for the Incinerate. Like, that's crazy, dude. Like, these three heroes, you know, Shilob, Dragonlord, and also Garkill the Goblin King can win the game alone with level 10 abilities. However, the thing is that Man of the West play has such a great map control, and that can be a proof, guys, for you that map control is everything, you know? Like, imagine the stuff he lost throughout the entire game. He lost Boromir, Elmer multiple times. He lost all the Rohirrim, all the Alvin Warriors, all the units. But he was, because he was able to get so much money from the map control he got, able to replace them every single time. Oh, 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 oh. Be careful, Dragon Lord. 
He's so he's so slow though, right? I'm, uh, or does it feel like that? I don't know. He feels he feels so slow when he's flying. I don't know why. The worms I'm in mean, defensively, but also the worm can be repositioned. Why he has double reposition? Again, that's a beta version, by the way, guys. So that's the beta for the upcoming version of the patch 1.09, which is going to be the version three. And there are some players, the expert players like Ictelion and also Archangel, they are testing it in playing games against each other just to see if everything is alright. And then after that, the patch is going to be released. Of course, we're gonna make a video about that and take a look into the changes they will be implementing into the new version. Beautiful Sonic song from Tom Bombadillo. Nine, I mean, what does this game do? That's such a long game with double 25 unlock from both the players. That's kind of crazy. Darkness is available now for the Goblin player, which means more DPS, more armor for both the normal units and also the monsters. Last for 180 seconds, my dude. 180 seconds. And by the way, that's like uh, always able to stack. That, that is able to stack with Warchan, with Tainted Lands, you know, with the leadership from the God Kill. So you can make your units extremely strong. There are some towers now, but I believe it's a little bit too late for that. Oh, nice long shot or nice arrow volley from the man of the West player. Guard kill is getting in safety. Such an amazing design hero. Look at him. Such a big creature, you know what I'm saying? Look at the wings, dude. Looks like the blue eyes white dragon <laughs> from the Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what I'm saying? He's going to take, take down this in eventually. There is a love story going on, by the way, guys, between this dude and there is a girl. So, by the way, this dude is around this side. The girl is like saying, hey, come come to the top side, hit me like a truck. And he's like, okay, I'm going to hit you like a truck. Trust me on that one. But then by the time he arrives here around this side, the girl is already gone. You know, she's like beating him pretty much. Not cool, girl. Not cool. The Fire Drakes has been special summoned once again. The summon Balrog is going to be available in about uh, 15 to 20 seconds. So... If the Goblin player can afford that, and I believe that's the best bet of the man of the best of the Goblin player, sorry, is to wait until the Summon Dragon is available. So, you want to use Summon Dragon and Balrog at the same time and coordinate that with your Fire Drake Summon from the Gorkill, the Goblin King. And then, with your heroes shield up, Gorkill, and also Dragoff, Dragoff, sorry, you will be committing on the Fortress. Because losing Fortress is a big lose in every single situation, since you won't be able to use your power points anymore, which is a massive thing, you know, in this game. Especially now, when everything is unlocked from the spellbook, you have no access to your power points. That's gonna be a big handicap. Many, many summons, fire drakes, uh, but ranges now with fire arrow, holy moly, hitting like an absolute track. Watch him. Can be special summon once again. I'm assuming he's not using the darkness because he's afraid that the Man of the West play ca can counter that with the Cloud Break, and he's not wrong about that. That's gonna be eventually happening. The second he will be using Darkness, Man of the West play will be using the Cloud Break, which cancels Freezing Rain, Darkness, and Cloud Break healing. And stuns enemy units for 10 seconds on top of that. 13 power points collected. Horn of Gondor, by the way. From Boromir, who's almost level 9, Fire Giant expansion, not Mountain Giant expansion, sorry. Army of the Dead will be summoned to clean up. And Balrog is available. So, uh, yeah, there are towers coming up for the Man of the West player now, because he's kind of rich and he needs to invest the money. I'm actually very surprised that he was never trying to get Gandalf or Aragorn on the field. All game long. And this game is quite a long one. I believe we are like 43 minutes in the game. And yet... We have not seen any strong creatures or, you know, heroes from the Man of the West player, Archangel. He was only getting Elmer and Aragorn, uh, not Aragorn, Boromir. Not even Therion, you know, Therion with Glorious Charge, especially when you go for the heavy, you know, cavalry-based army with Rohirrim and Skondonites. The Glorious Charge from Therion can be game-winning or game-changing. Goblins are down to 500 command points and Man of the West for a really long time has over, you know, has always a thousand command points since the last 15 minutes but it's just not enough to finish off the game i'm assuming it's just not enough everything will be unlocked from the spellbook these games are so rare that we don't get to see them very often like a full potential of a faction you know in this case we see a full potential of the goblin faction what happens if you actually invest the money early on into recruiting those heroes and invest the time to get them to level 10 Look how long they are able to withstand, how long 
they are able to defend even though the goblins player economy is so much worse eventually than the man of the west player economy even i mean here's scavenger he's getting some money from it but still like man of the west player with this many farms and marketplace with current harvest like trust me he will have much more money he was even using the ivory tower now which is the brightness on the in, on the tower that allows him by the way to see everything by the way so i'm gonna show you it reveals the entire map and also gives your units 10 percent more movement speed for 30 seconds I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think the um, Ivory Tower is the worst <laughs> from all the power, the, from all the special effects from the fortress of every single faction. Uh, because the goblins, for example, they can summon a fire drake, eagle from the elven faction, Mordor can use the Gorgoroth Spire Fireball, and Isengard can use the Thunderbolt Lightning, you know. And then you, as a man of the West player, has only the Ivory Tower for the vision control. Oh, the Dragon Lord has been blown away from the Rangers. Nice one. So what I'm trying to say is like from all the power uh, from all the powers of the fortress, uh, I'm, a, I'm a gonna be honest. I think the Man of the West factions is the worst. You know what I'm saying? Even though vision is not very bad, but it's just not enough. You know, good enough when you compare it with a uh, Gorgoroth Spire Fireball from Mordor, or the launch the Mighty Catapult from Dwarves. You know, which has like of course a much more destruction power. Look at the mini map. Do you see that? Like the entire map is yellow, my dude. Everything is yellow. 1000 command points for a really long time he has so much money but yet he's refusing to use the money into getting heroes like Gandalf or Aragorn fire drake summon once again inferno might be used to defend this area and that's gonna be the plan inferno on your face son and burning down these creatures from men of the west in two seconds and of course they are not permanent imagine if they would be permanent they would be kind of broken the fortress is in a safe spot we are getting more builders on the field another has been used by the way from the second one and again three of them is kind of nuts for a very cost efficient hero like Gorkil the goblin king if you ever, if you ever get him to level 10 it's kind of crazy how effect the balrog of morgov boom son look at this animation when he's getting special summon dude where is the fire drake oh he was using also the fire drake but where though did i miss it no, he's using it here. So he's actually trying to regain map control with the 25 power points. That's the plan. Balrog is gonna clean up this area. That's not the worst thing, but I'm assuming if you could use both of them at the same time around this side, you could deal a bit more damage. If not take down his fortress, you can still take down all his production buildings. Now he has many, many archery range level 3. You see that? So he will be able to spam units all the time. Balrog is still have, has still some time left on the... On the on the field nobody is using cloud break and nobody is using cloud uh, darkness because they know the second they use it it will be countered just like that rohirrim with uh, from the summon of men of the west and kind of surprising like you need to have a strong will you know what i'm saying and i'm talking about the goblin player he was down a lot like he was down to 250 he's down still to 400 command points in compared to 1000 do you see the map control difference with your own eyes at the bottom left side of your screen and yet he is refusing to give up like a true warrior and i like that i appreciate that fighting until the very end never give up never surrender breath fire he knows he has not much time left that's what he, that's why he's using it the worm summon is going to be available once again that can also be used for dealing economical damage not that it really matters too much against man of the west right now he has still 1000 command points available but again, he has not that much money because he needs to invest money all the time into reviving his units, into making new, new units, into reviving his heroes, into replacing the structures he keeps losing all the time. Okay, there is a marketplace being replaced now. And for the first time ever, I'm seeing him dropping down below 1000 health. Uh, I mean, resources. That's a good sign for the goblins. And uh, of course, I wish there would be an endgame statistic which could show us how much money you could have made or you made from using the scavenger all game long. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, this feature doesn't exist in Battle for Middle Earth 2 or Rise of the Witch King. Would be awesome to see. And I believe the more knowledge you have about a patch, and this is only possible when you have like a statistics at the end of the game to see how much damage this certain summon dealt, 
how much he was able to destroy, how much money the Grand Harvest was giving to you, for example, from the Man of the West faction, or how much money Scavenger was giving you from the Gob Goblin faction. That would be so helpful to balance the game a bit better. Because you are always assuming, you know? I've been playing Battle for Middle Earth 1 for many, many years myself, and I have no clue. I, I mean, you have like a feeling about that, but you have no clue, you have not enough knowledge about the cooldowns of Army of the Dead, about the cooldowns of Balrog, for example. And that's why in the patch 2.22, they added cooldowns. So now you as a player have knowledge. And we as developers from the patch have also more knowledge when it comes to balancing him. To make it more balanced, to make it more fun. The fire drakes are hitting like a truck and the barracks level 3 has been taken down. Earthquake is available for the third or fourth time, I don't, I don't remember. Like we have seen the 25s now for many, many times and I'm assuming we're gonna see at least one more rotation. However, if you take a look into the minimap, the map is getting slightly, slowly blue. It was yellow all game long, but now the goblins are shining bright like a diamond. And literally, because the flame is everywhere. Marketplace has been taken down, a lot of economic kill and productional damage has been dealt to the man of the west player he is still at 1000 command points but he has no production buildings anymore he has no barracks he has no stable he has no archer range he has no way of recruiting units and that is the snowball effect that is the momentum of the goblin player he has to commit on this one and try to destroy as many structures as he potentially can to finally drop the man of the west player below 1000 command points in which he's sitting on since the past 25 minutes the farm level 3 is going to be taken down that means he's going to lose now 175 command points watch this i mean maybe you don't even you won't even see that yeah look he has so many that losing this level 3 farm is not going to even get drop him down from a thousand command points that's crazy my dude oh gorkiel is running it down gorkiel is running it down the weakness of the mounted heroes like gorkiel when he's on a scorpion or a shield of the spider you know she's a spider at the end of the day is the pikeman the pikemen are able to hurt them big time. Big commitment now, but mainly of goblins. The old is getting in safety. Money is dropping down and down and down and down for the man of the best player. You have Boromir of position is level 10, but again, that doesn't do anything for you because Boromir is just a sportive hero, not like the best fighter in the entire game. Okay? Big commitment level 3 farm and finally dude man of the west player is finally dropping below a thousand command points since like 30 minutes and now he's gonna drop even lower look at that boom 8 uh, 750 watch this 725 and boom uh 6 nah 725 after losing this one that's crazy or bit summon cloud break and now he can use cloud darkness right oh i don't know what happened actually if he used the yeah he used darkness before so that's a mistake. You don't want to use Darkness first, because if you do that, then he will be using Cloud Break and negate your Darkness entirely and stun your units on top of that. So pretty, pretty good. Shilop is doing a good job. And you can use the... There we go. You see? Oh my god. Did you see the healing? Now, because the Hobbits are also considered as heroes like Frodo, Baggins, Samwise, Gamgee, Meriadoc, Brandybog, and Peregrine Took, and also Boromir. So she was able to heal so much with the Web of Ungoliant. Pretty nice. 550 command points for goblins, 825 for men. That's a good sign. Let me tell you that much. It's a very good sign. However, earthquake is available. And I don't want to miss that. I want to see that right now. Do it. Just do it. Use earthquake, my dude. 625 for goblins. Look, the power points are not even fitting in the in the screen anymore. <laughs> you have like a full line and then you have even this one, you know? Okay. And same for the goblins. Everything is unlocked from the spellbook. Lone Tower has been summoned defensively. I mean, offensively, sorry. How, how much for the army of the dead? Not long. Like, about 30 seconds. We have also the Rohan summon almost back up. And again, I believe the coordination of an attack at this stage of the game is crucial. Like, you want to use the army of the dead, Earthquake, and Rohan summon at the same time. And then you want to take down the fortress of goblins because you need to understand or i mean the man of the west player knows that goblins have not that much money like he has not enough money for five thousand to replace the fortress earthquake is coming in clutch but uh, not the best earthquake i've ever seen 
he wasn't even able to kill the expansions around the fortress. Looks like he doesn't even want to comment on the fortress just yet. The thing is, I believe taking down the fortress is the only way of winning this game for either player. Otherwise, we will be in a loop of repeating the same stuff over and over again. Rangers, a lot, you know, a lot of them actually at the bottom left side, they are doing nothing. Um... And I'm very, very upset about that, to be honest. I'm upset that we have not seen in the entire game over 55 minutes, not one single time Aragorn, not one single time Tyrion, not one single time Gandalf, not one single time even Elvin. Hell, I'm even missing Faramir. Give him the chance to show his quality. Please. Do something. You have so many heroes as men of the West, and that's your win condition, right, in long terms. And it's kind of a bad thing if you don't make a use of that. You know what I'm saying? Army of the Dead will be used defensively, to kill a couple of units, I'm, I don't like this at all. Like you can see the performance is not at the peak anymore from the players, you know what I'm saying? And they will keep making more and more mistakes eventually in long terms. And lots of spider riders around this side. 675 for goblins and 975 for men. But you have seen that command points do not matter as much in this situation because the, hob uh, the, the heroes have such a crazy impact. And the amount of money he's missing as the goblin player... He's getting from the scavenger anyway. Big commitment now, but army of the dead, they have not much time left. They will be gone very soon. Boromir, level 10, and I'm assuming he was not even reviving his Elmir anymore. And Shilob is doing a phenomenal job, but she can't win the game solo. The dragon summon is almost back up. The Balrog summon is almost back up. And I'm assuming the best thing, again, that counts for both the players. The best thing in this situation for the goblin player is to commit on the fortress and try to take it down. With the Balrog summon, with the dragon summon, with the worm summon, and then with the fire drakes you can spawn from Gorkil the Goblin King, you know what I'm saying? That's your best pet. Because that will buy you so much time. You see, now in the very late game in Battle for Middle-earth 2, it is about the rotation of the power points, army of the dead, Earthquake, Balrog, Summon Dragon, Worm, Rohan Summon. Like, the more, the longer the game goes on, the more impactful the power points are going to become. And that's why it's so important and crucial to take down the enemy fortress. This way he can't use the power points anymore for a really long time until he will be able to replace the fortress. That's going to buy you, in the worst case scenario, a lot of time. But again, it's a risky move if you try to take down the fortress and if you can't do it, you will lose a lot of potential too. So I can understand the reasoning why they are not trying to do that. And also again, the 25 power points like Baldrock and Summon Dragon, they are not dealing crazy amount of damage to the fortress. That's why you need to empower that with a Worm Summon, with Shield Up, with the Gorky the Goblin King, and the Fire Drakes he's able to spawn. And talking about Gorkil the Goblin, look at his face. <laughs> Gorkil the Goblin King. He's surprised. Like, he's like, what is going on? You know? Look at the yellow eyes. Beautiful. Handsome dude. Has easy time on the girls. Trust me on that one. Okay, so the Goblin player is losing a lot around the fortress. But you can see money is still pretty good. Now he will be getting the fire drake. I'm also very surprised that he was not even trying to revive his Dragon Lord Rogoff. After losing him to the Rangers before. And I'm assuming that's going to be his plan. The worm will be summoned, however, to kill this outpost around this side. And the worm is dealing crazy amount of damage to the structures as well. Watch this. Do you see that? One-shotting almost the barracks level 1. Okay, so we have now spider riders, goblin warriors, heal up. Okay, okay. With war chant, cave beds, heal from the spellbook, wipe off the land summon from the spellbook. Now is the time to shine. This fortress is not even that great, uh, that nicely protected. I'm assuming you will have the chance to take it down. This outpost is going to be taken down first, that's good. You know, fighting its way slowly but surely up to the top side or bottom side in this case. Rangers ready for defense with fire arrow purchase eventually later on. The tunnel is going to be taken down. I mean, one thing I need to say about Archangel, he's doing a phenomenal job. Keep focusing on the map control all the time. Making sure that the goblins are not able to spread out. You know what I'm saying? And that takes a lot of focus. Especially in a long game like that, which lasts over an hour now. And still keep focusing on the map control since the minute number one is very impressive. So, big credits to Archangel. 
Darkness is going to be used. Glowbreak is having a longer cooldown, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So now, we have the Balrog Summon. Breath Fire. It looks like you want to commit on the Fortress, finally. But you can see, that's what I'm trying to say. The Balrog's Breath Fire damage is not the greatest. But he has now the chance of committing multiple times. With the Wildman of Dunland, with the Spider Summon, and now with the Spider Riders coming also. Tom Bombadil will be used defensively. Hobbit Summon will be used defensively. Man of the West Play is worried that he might lose the Fortress. And he's taking lots of damage. Where is the Summon Dragon at? I mean, he can also use the Summon Dragon at the same time. The Cloud Break is going to be available very, very soon. He might be forced to use it to stun the enemy units if he wants to take himself some time. Remember, if you summon the Balrog, you can use the Breath Fire twice. But you can see that Breath Fire doesn't deal too much damage. He's going to use Ignite for doubling the damage. This way, Balrog's auto attacks, as you can see and tell, are dealing a bit more damage. The Fire Drakes are being summoned at the same time from Gorkil the Goblin King. They have Triple Inferno. And the Fortress, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be taken down. That's a massive success now for the Goblin player. Even though Man of the West player has still 1,000 command points available. But he has now, as you can see at the, at the left side, not the chance to use his power points. Which is a massive thing, by the way, in this game. Especially at this late game stage. Like, when you have Army of the Dead, Earthquake, this and that. And you can't summon them anymore. That's massive. The Summon Dragon is also available. And by the way, if, after taking down the Fortress, all you gotta do is take down every single production building and that's GG. And the Fire Drakes are doing a phenomenal job. Taking down the Barracks, taking down the Archer range with the Weapon of Talent Summon. But I'm assuming he won't be able to finish this off because the timers are gonna be gone from the Fire Drakes very, very soon. Never mind. Uh, Gorkil can finish it off. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. So here's a Barracks around the bottom left side. And yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Let me check. Let me check. Yeah, that's pretty much it, my dude. Like, if he loses the barracks, it's over. And these farms have zero protection. So they, he will be eventually losing every single farm. And dropping finally down from 1,000 command points again. There are multiple level 3 farms. And every single one of these is giving you, in total, 175 command points. And just count that. Like, 2 of them, 350. 4 of them, 700. So if you take down 4 of these, he will lose 700 command points. Just like that. The thing is that he has still a builder, by the way. That's very important. That The worst thing that can happen to you is if you lose your fortress and you have no more builder, that means you can't replace any more structures or you can't even replace your fortress. So having at least one or two builders saved, like he does, he has two builders, is very, very important. However... You also can see and tell that he is far away from getting anywhere close for the 5,000. The Summon Dragon is going to be summoned now on top of the Rohirrim to knock them back. And again, he can reposition. So it doesn't matter where you use him, just reposition multiple times and you are good to go. I'm assuming the Goblin player doesn't know that there is an outpost at the bottom left side, which is also nicely protected with the, you know, farms around it and the blacksmith and the tower behind it. So it's not the worst thing, but again... The Summon Dragon likes this because he's able to hit multiple structures at the very same time. And also around this side, he's, you know, getting more and more Galadrim Warriors. Has to invest all the money he got. Or Shirab is able to find this area now. Okay. Dragon can be repositioned. And that's gonna be his plan. Fly my dragon, fly my dragon, and land my dragon, land my dragon. All right. So now the tower is going to get one shot. of course. There is no, nothing the tower can do against the Summon Dragon. And look at this. You see, that's what I'm trying to say. You see, he's able to hit multiple structures at the very same time. And there is only Archer range and Barracks left. After losing these, he's going to be gone. And again, even if he somehow is able to replace his Fortress, he needs to... Un oh, he's going to leave. Archangel has been defeated. What a great game. What a back and forth game. And what a great counterplay. I mean, like endurance. You know what I'm saying? Like the will of winning the game was crazy and superior from Archangel over uh, from Ethereum. I mean, sorry. And was a fantastic and phenomenal game. You can see that heroes are very impactful if you get to recruit them early on and level them up for later on. That was a perfect proof. Well played from both the players. And I'm kind of sad and a bit upset that we were not able to see heroes like Gandalf and Aragorn from Man of the West player. Imagine if you get Aragorn and Gandalf level 10. You know, you have seen now Shilop and Gorkil level 10. Imagine if this would be the other way around. If you imagine you have Water of Power 
every couple of minutes and also the army of the dead summon from aragon this game would look different trust me on that one thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed your stay if you did please don't forget to leave a like i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out